some white lights, some under dash lighting, a passenger with good conversation, dim your dash lights, and um, and if you're tired, go to sleep, save your energy drinks until the end of the trip. Welcome back guys, Bling Bling Bob here again from Hunt Shoot Off Road. And um, I just thought I would chat with you a uh, bit about driving at night. I'm currently smashing out the Ks. Uh, I'm on my way out to Lightning Ridge to meet a mate to camp for the night. And then I'm headed off to Walgett, which is about 70 Ks to the road, to shoot on a property. And uh, I love driving at night. It's my favorite way to really knock out the Ks. Um, I find it's easy to overtake. Um, uh, there's less traffic on the road. Um, it's more relaxing, so it's like stress-free. I can really, really smash the Ks out quite well. Um, it's currently uh, 8.16, which is actually quite early for me. Normally I would leave work from Brisbane at about 5 or 5.30, jump in the car, drive for eight hours to get to Walgett. So what's that work out to be? Uh, you know, maybe two o'clock or something like that. If I have a really good run, and um, and so I just thought I'd talk about how I do that, what I consider safely, and um, maybe you guys can learn from that or or whatnot. Now I've never been a professional truck driver. I've never been any kind of professional driver driving distances. This is only my personal experience and from smashing out the K's on big trips, and uh, I've learned a lot over the time and. Uh, Techniques seem to be getting better and better, be making it easier and easier. Not as long, young as I used to be, so it's definitely not as easy as it used to be. But with these small little tips and tricks, it's certainly made it um, very manageable still. So the number one thing that I would talk about is having a good passenger. A good passenger can really melt away those Ks really quickly because get involved in a really good conversation, talking about just anything jibber jabber, funny stories, things that are about to happen or things that have happened in the past and um, you spin those yarns and next thing you you just wish the trip was like another 300 k's just so you could keep talking with your mates and uh, that's probably the number one way to really smash k's out. Now what I will say is if you've got a group of three or four or five people you know, a lot of the time it's like, it's my turn to sit in the front, people sit in the front and they want to rotate from being in the middle and that. If you're driving at night, the person in the passenger seat has to be awake. Just because it's the most comfortable seat, the easiest spot to sleep in, that is not the role of the person in the passenger seat. The person in the passenger seat must be awake and must be keeping the driver entertained. If the, if the person in the passenger seat is not doing that, pull over and kick them out. Put whoever's awake in the back, get them in the front, and just just let, you know, keep melting away those kilometers because it will be detrimental because it's hard to talk to someone in the back. You know, you, yeah, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just not safe. It's pretty dangerous. So don't let, if there's if you've got a awake occupant in the back there, put them in the front. It's, it's the best thing you can do. You won't regret it. Um, that's my number one tip. When I drive to Dubbo for the weekend and stuff like that, and I regularly do that just to go visit my friends there, and um, my wife, she'll be asleep straight away, gone, and uh, she'll just be asleep the whole time. So that's not always an option, but certainly if you're going on a hunting trip, which probably most people are when they're driving big kilometres late at night, um, yeah, just take advantage of that. Now, probably another thing that um, I actually learned by mistake and then actually had it verified later was I used to have some uh, red neon lights under the dash and uh, I used to turn them on and it, it, it was really good you know you can see your feet but you couldn't see the source of the light all you could see was the glow coming down from the dash and it would light up all the, all the footwell and I just found that it really made you stay awake for longer. Now my theory on that is the old wife's tale where your mum goes, don't sit and watch TV in the pitch black. 
it's bad for your eyes, you know, they'd make up these things like that, I'm sure other people's mothers have said the same thing, and um, I think what happens is, when you're sitting in the car at night time, you just get this tunnel vision, you're just looking down, straight down the road, and your eyes get tired, they get lazy, because they're just looking in one spot, in one distance, and you're not exercising them. I mean, this is a common thing when you work in an office and you look at a computer screen. The number one thing they, they tell you is that you need to get up and you need to look around. You need to stretch your eyes, look outside, look down the hallway, and all this type of stuff. And um, so that's that's one point to, to do that, to, to stretch your eyes. So by having that ambient light around you, you can look around. You can, you know, you can see there. And I just found that that really um, helped prolong my drives. Now, what I will say then is what happened is I got a lift with a, a truck driver and he had red lights under the dash. And I said to him, what are they for? He goes, it makes it easy to stay awake at night time. Surprise, surprise. And I said to him, oh, did you install them? And he said, no, they come from the factory fitted with the lights. So I found that really interesting. Um, another thing with that, is don't have your dash lights too bright. If your dash lights are too bright, it just shines into your eyes and makes you tired. So reduce your dash lights down to the lowest setting you can. Um, sometimes it's a bit frustrating because you can't turn off the like the stereo lights and that can't dim down, and uh, that's not real good either. Next thing would be music. Um, I do listen to music, but what I'm always mindful of is not to listen to music that uh, relaxes me or calms me down because what I don't want is to go in too much of a relaxed state where I'm basically falling asleep because that's obviously completely against what I want. But I don't go play headbanging music to try and wind me up. I think if you're doing that, um, it's, not, it's not the right thing to do. It's kind of you know, uh, it doesn't have the effect that you, you want. Certainly if you like that type of music, go ahead. And if that's your normal type of music, play it. But um, just don't play what I would consider relaxing music. Or if there's any music that you play before you go to bed, never ever play that because it trains your mind into going to sleep from listening to the music. If you play that on a long drive, you're literally gonna go to sleep. Um, so one of the other things too is, uh, I've got a Samsung Galaxy, and there is a feature on there called Blue Filter. And what this is, is a feature, so when you're going to bed at night, you can literally hit this blue filter, and it takes the blue out of the screen, which is supposed to be much better for your eyes at night time. And apparently it's because when the sun goes down, all the blue light goes out of the air and this is a natural way of your mind telling you it's time to go to sleep so i was having tro troubles where i was staying awake too late at night and i was playing games on my iphone or watching youtube or and all that sort of garbage like that and so what i did was i i turned on this uh blue filter and all of a sudden i was going to sleep much sooner than i would in the past and what i found is since I've changed my headlights to a, a, a wider light instead of being yellow, it makes it much easier to stay awake because you've got that nearly smashed a root. Like, you know, you've got this wider light that's a natural um, mechanism for keeping you awake. And um, I think that that's something you need to invest in, a good set of headlights and also a good set of spotlights. Now, I'm going to do a, a video on on lighting in another episode just but whatever you do don't get too much light don't have like two nine inch lights and a light bar because when you come off lights you can't see anything that's that's off topic that's got nothing to do with keeping you awake um, and probably one of the other things is energy drinks um, look these are a tool that can be used but I think they're artificial and if you rely on energy drinks, um, you're giving yourself a false confidence. It's really important that you understand what you're doing and, um, and, 
and don't do it in the incorrect way. So what I found over time is that um, what I found over time is that if I had the energy drinks too early in the trip, then I'll take a dive later on in the trip and I'll just I can't come out of that that state where I'm just like I'm just too tired I can't do it I will put a link to a, a, a YouTube video in the description and it talks about what caffeine does to your brain and how your body processes the caffeine and I think if you have a look at that and understanding of how the caffeine works it, it might actually explain some things to you if you are a big energy drink drinker um, but certainly uh, I'll put that in the bottom so what I found, if you're going to drink energy drinks, you really need to save them to much later in the trip. So say until you've got like uh, two hours from the end of your trip, maybe three hours from the end of your trip. And then, because what you can get is you can get into what I call the zone. The zone's when you're just driving, you're just like this. And, and that's really when you're smashing out the case. If you can get to that, you don't want to be drinking energy drink at that stage. Have the energy drink much later in the, in the drive. And the reason I say two or three hours out from your destination is because if you drink an energy drink like say an hour or half an hour before you're in your destination, you're going to go to bed and if you watch this other video that I was telling you about, you won't go to sleep you'll have like a disco going on in your brain and you'll have your eyes closed and you'll just see flashing lights and you can't wind down and it like completely ruins you for the next day. So all that night driving and smashing out the case and drinking all those energy drinks has like a negative effect because you can't even, pro you know, you can't even function the next day because you couldn't go to sleep. So that's something to be uh, mindful of and uh, something to, to stop for very long like I know they say you know don't drive more than two hours without stopping and all that sort of stuff like that but look let's be honest you guys are eager to get out there I'm eager to get out there and you don't want to stop for anything if you need to go to the toilet just stop and go to the toilet don't don't waste time holding on to it because it makes you feel really uncomfortable if you just stop urinate jump back in the car and drive You'll have lost two minutes. Now, two minutes is nothing. And just being out the car for that two minutes, you get some nice fresh air, you get a cool breeze on your face, you know, you get the blood moving through your body again, and you'll just, you'll be able to smash out like another hour of driving, no problem. And um, so just be mindful of that, that if you need to go to the toilet, just, just get out and stop, go to the toilet, jump back in the car. See, the problem with stopping to go to the toilet is if you hold and wait, then you'll be like, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop at the next servo and go to the servo, go to the toilet, and you're like, oh, I might buy a bag of chips, I'll talk to the servo tenant. Next thing you just lost like 15 minutes or, or 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour, for when you could have just stopped on the side of the road and lost two minutes. So you saved 18 minutes by by not waiting till you got to the next servo. And uh, I guess that brings me to the next point is, obviously, getting there alive is better than dying. If you are tired, pull over and sleep. I, I used to be afraid of this all the time. I was like, man, I don't want to sleep because I won't be able to sleep when I get there. And all these sort of shenanigans like that. And, and I guess I thought that that was true. And it, possibly it was. But, man, if you're tired and your eyes are doing micro sleep, just pull over. Don't even keep driving. I, it's it's not worth it. Just pull over, put the seat back, and go to sleep. Like, even if it's just like 10 minutes, have the 10 minutes sleep. But what I will say is, don't set an alarm. Do not set an alarm. Just go to sleep, and when your body wakes up, just wake up, put the seat up, and drive again. If you go to sleep for 10 minutes, that's fine. If you end up asleep for longer than that, that's fine. It doesn't matter. What's it matter? You need eight hours sleep, say. What's it matter if you do two hours on the side of the road and six hours at your destination, or you do 10 minutes on the side of the road and seven hours 50 at the end destination? You st ultimately, you still got your sleep. It might be broken, but hey, it's better than smashing your car and, and killing yourself or nearly killing yourself or killing your mates. That would be like the worst thing in the world. 
you know, having to go home and answer to people because uh, you thought you could smash out the kilometres, but you can't. And uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I used to, so I've probably taken the power napping like quite regularly now. And um, it's, I was coming home from the Sunshine Coast. It's only like a two hour drive, hour and a half drive, I, I can't remember. And um, we were like, I was 45 minutes from home. It was 1.30 and I like, I like was about to nod off and I was like, I'm done. So I just pulled over, put the seat back and went to sleep. The next thing a truck went past, I woke up, put the seat up, started driving, looked at the clock and it was like 4.45 in the morning. I'd been asleep for three hours. I was like, wow, I must have been hammered. And I just think to myself, what if I tried to push through that tiredness just so I could get home because I was like so close to home. It could have ended so badly. But you know what? I got home, went to bed, fell asleep straight away, woke up at like nine o'clock in the morning and I was fresh as. And um, so all I can say is don't be afraid to go to sleep. But so I just, in summary, if you want to have good experience driving at night, and, and I do enjoy driving at night, like I said, it's easy to overtake. You can see the headlights of other vehicles coming, especially with these modern high beams, uh, or spotlights, I should say. You really can see people coming from a, a good distance, so you know when you can overtake safely and all that sort of stuff like that. Less vehicles on the road. Be careful at dawn, because that's when all the kangaroos come out. And uh, even though I've got a bull bar and a truck, I, I really don't want to smash kangaroos, because I had a mate ripped his upper control arm off of his Hilux because he hit a kangaroo at the wrong angle or something like that. You know, you can smash your spotlights. And it's just not worth it. So you might as well try and slow down where you have to. But sometimes that can be a bit thick when you get out into these spots and it's been like a drought or dry. They come up on the edge of the road to feed. Um, so yeah, so, so make sure you've got good white lights, some under dash lighting, a passenger with good conversation if you can and if he's falling asleep and you've got another guy in the back put him in the front dim your dash lights and um and if you're tired go to sleep save your energy drinks until the end of the trip and look guys it's that easy um don't if you haven't done it before don't think you can you're a master and you're a wizard man no one's a hero um don't be like that uh step, just slowly build up to it if you've never driven over two hours, I wouldn't recommend doing it anyway, so just get yourself comfortable. All right, guys, that's it for tonight, and uh, I'm probably like uh, two and a half hours out of uh, Lightning Ridge, I'm having a good drive, having good chats. Uh, if, if you're enjoying the videos, please make sure you hit the, the subscribe button, wherever it may be, in the middle there at the end of the video, or it's uh, down in the... Um, right hand corner I think that's that side and uh, that's, maybe it's actually this side um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up got any questions please hit us up in the uh, comments and uh, till next time guys safe driving and have fun get shooting see you later